Your Excellency, Professor Yemi Oshibaju, Vice President, Federal Republic of Nigeria. Your Excellency, Mr. Kiwomi Ambody, the Executive Governor of Lagos State. Distinguished Senators of the Federal Republic of Nigeria here present, Honorable Members of the House of Representatives of the Federal Republic of Nigeria here present, Honorable Speaker of Lagos House of Assembly, Members of the Lagos State Executive Council, Members of Lagos House of Assembly, Chairmen and Members of Local Government Councils, Your Excellencies, Heads of Diplomatic Missions, Distinguished Heads of Churches and Christian Associations, Distinguished Guests, Brothers and Sisters, ladies and gentlemen. I welcome everyone to this anniversary interdenominational service this morning in Jesus' name. Yeah. And I pray it will be a blessed time for everyone. Yeah. And the Lord will enrich your life, bless your life, and everyone will go away with the blessings of the Lord in Jesus' name. Yeah. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we bless your name at this time. We thank you for our country. We thank you for our state. We thank you for everyone present here today. We're asking, Lord, there'll be impartation of real life, eternal life in every life here today in Jesus' name. Turn our lives around. Turn our families around. Bless our state. Bless our nation move everyone forward in jesus name touch every life transform our state in jesus name we pray thank you god bless you, you can have your seats i'm looking at john chapter one in john chapter one i'm reading a verse of scripture here verse six there was a man sent from god whose name was John. Looking at that verse, we need to go back in history and understand in every generation, God looks for a man or a woman. As we have read that verse in John chapter 1 verse 6, we could have said, and the scripture could have written, there was a man sent from God whose name was Abraham. Or whose name was Joseph, or whose name was Moses, or whose name was Joshua. We could have read the verse as saying, There was a man sent from God, sent from God on purpose to do something, to achieve something in the present, in their own world. A man like David, a man like Elijah. A man like Jeremiah, a man like Daniel. In fact, as we look at the scriptures, God has a purpose, a great purpose, and a great, a glorious purpose for every individual. You're not here by accident in the world. You're not here in Nigeria or any part of the world by accident. God sent you here. And as he sent you here in this generation, he wants you to fulfill a purpose. You will fulfill that purpose. As you look at Psalm 105, verse 17, the psalm is now commenting about the life of a man, the ministry of a man, the impact of a man. His name, Joseph. He said, he sent a man before them, even Joseph. And you could have put your name there, and you ought to put your name there. He sent you here into the world. You will do something. 
In fact, even Joseph told his brothers, he said, don't worry about what you've done. That she brought me here. Look at this. God sent me before you to preserve life. As we go through the Old Testament and the New Testament, going from Abraham to Zechariah, God has always sent a man, has always used a man to reveal his will and to fulfill his plan and purpose for his people in every generation. He never lacks a man that will stand in the gap and get something done which is according to his will. He sent Joseph and used him to preserve Israel in Egypt. He sent Moses I used him to deliver his chosen nation from bondage. And then he appointed Joshua to lead the nation into the promised land. He equipped and engaged David to conquer Israel's powerful enemies. Enlisted and empowered Elijah to turn the nation back to God Almighty. And he anointed and envisioned Isaiah to keep the hope of the nation of Israel alive for the coming Messiah. He appointed, he raised up Daniel to preserve divine revelation. Today, God is still searching for yielded men and yielded women. You will be a man in God's hand, a woman in God's hand. He has a mandate for every family to do something and fulfill his will in every family, in every institution, in every industry, in every field, everywhere. You can be the man of God's choice. And you can be the woman of God's choice anywhere you are. You can make a difference for good in this land. I will make a difference for good in this land. You can be a change agent and a better for the better and a reformer. Today, I'm looking at the message with you, becoming a man, becoming a woman, God uses beyond his generation. Look at the people I mentioned to you. They became men and women that God used in their generation. Yes, and then beyond their generation. As I look at the message, becoming a man, becoming a woman, God uses beyond his generation. Let me personalize it, beyond your generation. Three things very quickly. Number one, the significance of a man in every generation take any generation take our generation take the past generations and take the generations to come the significance of a man in every generation number two i'm looking at the service to all men in our generation when god raises you up and when god raises up anyone he wants to make use of that person in a service to that generation and then point number three i'll be looking at the savior at our lord jesus christ who is for all men in every generation number one is the significance as you think about this i'm picking up on joseph the story of joseph the life of joseph the dream of joseph the vision of joseph the accomplishment of Joseph, the achievement of Joseph. He appeared before Pharaoh. Pharaoh had, had a dream. I'm sure you know the story. And this dream could nobody interpret. Until, but God always has a man in any place and every place to bring solution to every problem. I believe in your community, in our community, in our state, in our nation, God has a man god has a woman and so in the case of pharaoh and egypt they said there's a man in the land there's a man in the land i'm looking at you there i said there's a man in the land and then eventually he came he interpreted the dream 
he went beyond interpretation. He went to what we call intervention. Let somebody come out with the idea to preserve the nation when we'll have real challenge. And Pharaoh listened. And Pharaoh thoughtfully said this. He said in G Genesis chapter 41, reading here from verse 38, it says, this is Pharaoh not talking about, talking about uh, Josh, uh, Joseph. It says, and Pharaoh said unto Joseph, for as much as God has showed thee all this, there is none so district and so wise as thou art. And I had said in verse 38, and Pharaoh said unto his servants, Can we find such a, such a one as this? A man, underline that, a man, underline that, fill your space, find your place, stand in your place, be the man and be the woman of the hour for this generation until a person like Pharaoh will be able to say, can we find a man like this in whom the spirit of the Lord is? In fact, as God spoke to Jeremiah in Jeremiah chapter 5, look at what the Lord is saying through Jeremiah chapter 5. It's always looking for a man. You start in Genesis and you come almost to beyond the middle of the Bible and you're still searching for a man. In a generation, the Lord is looking for you. He will use you. I said he will use you. You'll be significant in his sight in Jesus' name. Jeremiah chapter 5 verse 1, he says, Run ye to and fro through the streets of Jerusalem through the streets of any city in a nation and see now and know and seek in the broad places thereof if ye can find tell me a man that's what he's looking for he'll find you if he can find a man if there be any that executes judgment that seeketh the truth and I will pardon it he says, for the sake of that man, I'll bring needed blessing to that generation. As we think about this, the significance of a man in every generation, what kind of man will God be looking at? Number one, a man or the Savior's pardon. A man or the Savior's pardon. All I've seen that come short of the glory of God. And the one that lives in sin is under a load. It's a captivity. It's under a body. It's under pressure. There's guilt. There's condemnation. But then Jesus Christ provides pardon. He provides forgiveness. That's why the word of God says that God the Father has raised him up. That is raised up the Lord Jesus Christ to be a prince and to be a savior for to give repentance to Israel. And forgiveness of sins. Number two, it will be a man of strong persuasion, a man that is blown by the wind, the wind of criticism, and the wind of circumstances can never do anything. It's looking at this side, it's looking at that side. What do they think about me? What do you think about yourself? Be a man of a backbone, a man of stamina, a man that has the grace of God in his life, and be a man with strong persuasion. You think about Daniel in the, in the land of Babylon, and it says Daniel purposed in his heart. And Nebuchadnezzar couldn't change that. Babylon couldn't change that. It was a man whose heart was firm. And it says Daniel purposed in his heart that he, should, he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine that he drank. Therefore, he requested of the prince of the eunuchs that he would not, he might not defile himself. You know the usefulness of that man in Babylon because he was a man of strong persuasion in your life make up your mind get the pardon from the lord forgiveness of your sin and then be persuaded know that you are going a direction and follow that direction number three a man of sound principles if we're going to be a change agent in the state in any community in the nation in any nation 
you must be a person that is sound in principle there is something you follow there's a path you follow and there is what you do and you're not going to change or falter and then uh, that, that's uh, number four now a man with strategic program nothing will change except somebody rises up to make that change nothing is going to turn around by itself there is a law of motion that says any object will remain static until an outside force comes to move that object the same thing nothing will change in any community until a person has a strategic program and he knows that this is going to bless everyone you will be that man number five a man or selfless perspectives a man was selfless perspectives here is paul the apostle now and he tells us about his life and about his impact he said though i be free from all men yet have i made myself servant unto all that i might gain them all you need to understand that sacrifice is what is needed in life and if you're going to make a contribution to the growth of the state, the growth of the nation, and the prosperity of your community, you must be a person that is selfless in service. Remember, the Lord Jesus Christ lives in the heart of true believers. And he is the one that has paid the supreme price. He gave the supreme sacrifice. And because he lives in us, you can go ahead and be a man with selfless perspectives. Number six, a man with scriptural perception. A man with scriptural perception. It's not somebody who is a fanatic. It's not somebody who is, you cannot predict him because he does things just anyhow. He's thoughtful, he's faithful, he's loyal, he's deliberate, he's going in a particular direction and he knows that this will be of benefit to everyone. If you're going to be used of God and thank God you're going to be used of God. I'm talking to somebody there today. I said, you'll be used of God. You'll be used of God in Jesus' name. Number seven is a man of sterling paradoxes. Paradoxes. It's like there are some opposite qualities and characteristics in life. And there are people that tend to just this side. They don't have paradoxes in their lives. You look at the life of Jesus Christ, and it was a man of sterling Paradoxes. Number one, he was meek. That's not all. He was also mighty. It appears, you see, a person who is meek will not be mighty, but Jesus combined those two things. Number two, he was friendly and he was firm. Very friendly and firm. Number three, he was tender and yet he was tall. Number four, he was compassionate yet courageous. Number five, he was simple yet strong he was resigned yet resilient he was approachable yet authoritative these are qualities in the lives of people that god will use he will use me i said he will use me he will use you in jesus name if he's going to use us and thank god he's going to use us he's going to use me he's going to use everyone what is a kind of service we come to render unto the lord as we look at the people in the old generation that he is in the former generation the thing that is said about them is not just paper qualification the thing that is said about them is not just their position in society it's the service they rendered in society that brings me to point number two our service to all men in our generation our service to all men in our generation let me read about this man to you it's in acts of the apostles chapter 13 i'm reading from verse 36 acts of the apostles chapter 13 and i'm reading from verse 36 look at what it says over here it says for david after he served his own generation by the will of god stop there for a moment it says david what can we say about him the conclusion of his life 
the one sentence biography of his life he served his own generation come to think about it every sinner in creation is made to serve mankind each person only fulfills god's will when he forgets himself and when he serves other people david served his own generation by the will of god a true disciple like david will serve his brethren will serve his neighbors will serve its employers, will serve its communities, will serve the world how selflessly, will serve how sacrificially, will serve how positively, will serve progressively, will serve to the best of his ability. David was a man at God's own heart. He had a heart to serve. God's nation transparently. Jesus is God's beloved Son, in whom the Father is well pleased, and He served and gave His life to save the world. God continues the search today. He's seeking for men saved and sanctified. He's seeking for men converted and committed. He's seeking for men selfless and steadfast who will serve and improve the lot of their fellow men in all possible areas as you think about the service we're going to render you will render service i said you will render service how can we break it down so that you know i do this then i'm serving i go this direction then i'm serving number one sincere servanthood for our generation you look at your generation and you say i'm going to serve and i take on the title of a servant for david served his own generation number two special service with grace and godliness special service with grace and godliness don't wait until somebody tells you this is what you do if you never do anything except what you are told to do or if on the other hand you never do what you are told to do your life will be limited your impact will be limited it's when you come on and you're able to go the extra mile and you do what you are not commanded to do positively practically and you do what others are not willing to do daniel and such favor and he earned such recognition in babylon because this daniel was preferred above the presidents and the princes because an excellent spirit was found in him and the king thought to set him over the realm you know why because he offered service with grace and godliness and no fault was found in him number three sustained support for the grassroots sustained support for the grassroots we just had the mention of the name mordecai during a prayer both for the stage and for the nation let me show you this about this man mordecai you may not be familiar with him but he had support for the grassroots sacrifice for the grassroots service for the grassroots it's in esther chapter 10 and in verse 3 for mordecai the jew was next unto the king ahasuerus and great among the jews and accepted of the multitude of his brethren look at this look at this seeking the wealth of his people all the people protection for the people progress for the people and whatever he could do to make the life of everyone the grassroots better he did that seeking the wealth of his people and speaking peace to all his seed number four supervised strategies with ground breaking goals we're speaking about joseph and this is still about joseph the nation of egypt was to go through famine and now this man had strategic 
activities with ground breaking goals i pray god will give us the wisdom to be a problem solver not to be people to complain this is going on this is going on look at the nation look at the state and look at this and look at that and everybody is complaining there is not complaint complaint will not solve the problem what will you do about it god will make you a solution somebody there say god will make you a solution you'll be a solution in jesus name number five self-sacrifice without guaranteed gain self-sacrifice without guaranteed gain here is what J J jonathan spoke and said about david he said for he did put his, his life in his hand and he slew the philistine and the lord wrought a great salvation for all israel thou sawest it and didst rejoice he didn't have any guarantee of any gain but all the same he made the necessary sacrifice it's uh, about time every christian true christian every believer every true believer will stop staying what will i get out of it what will they give me out of it without any guaranteed gain go ahead and be of service to the people around you number six strict steadfastness to the golden rule that the things you do the service you render and the sacrifice that you make all you are thinking about if i were in this situation what would i expect others to do for me or to do to me jesus said therefore all things whatsoever ye would that men would do unto you do ye even so to them and now the final thing you're ready to serve and you are giving yourself committed yourself to service we leave the result in the hand of god submission to god and his glory that's what one of the soldiers in israel that was he said to another companion soldier he said be of good courage let us behave ourselves valiantly for our people let us behave ourselves forget about yourself now and forget about your own need now you are called to serve let us let us commit ourselves and behave ourselves valiantly for people for the cities and for the cities of our god listen to the last line and let the lord do that which is good in his sight i render service i leave the result to god I sacrifice i leave the result to god i want to follow christ i want to be like christ in helping my neighbor in helping my community and in helping the people around me and then i leave the rest into the hands of the lord and then i commit myself i'm going to follow the savior and that leads to point number three now the savior of men in every generation jesus is savior somebody there said jesus is savior jesus christ the savior your savior my savior and what is savior he is whatever situation of life you find yourself jesus will come to lift you up whatever condition you may find yourself jesus is the answer Look at this as you look at the whole testament and you put everything together and summarize the ministry and the sacrifice and everything that jesus christ provides number one is the sacrificial lamb to all sinners behold the lamb of god that takes away the sin of the world every guilt will take away from you all the confusion will take away from you and the judgment that comes upon sinners here in life and in the great beyond in eternity the lord jesus even today will take that from you in jesus name to all sinners he is a sacrificial lamb to the lost he is the seeking lamb and to the alienated he is a sure ladder unto god to the sick he is a supernatural lifesaver if you're sick, he'll touch your body. He will deliver you. He will set you free. 
to the weak is the strengthening love and to the oppressed is a strong liberator to the unloved outcast he is the sympathetic lover jesus lover of your soul he will show that practical love to everyone even today in jesus name to the downtrodden he is the supplicating lawyer he'll defend you he'll protect you is our advocate to the broken hearted he is a supportive listener to the dejected he is the soul lifter to the defenseless he is the safeguarding lion nothing will hurt your life Amen. to all men he is the sufficient lifeline to the nation the supreme leader to the world the shining light and to the whole universe he is the sovereign lord what a savior he can be your savior today what a savior he can be your savior forever savior yes and more than that his savior his deliverer his healer his provider he is lord his master is our guide is all you will need all you will ever need here in this life and what you will need all through eternity you say i want him to be all that for me very simple repent that means you've been depending upon other power personality or whatever you turn away from all those things that cannot save ultimately and you turn to the lord jesus christ you say lord i open my heart to you i turn away from everything that cannot save ultimately i turn to jesus as my only savior that's all and then believe say lord i believe you died for me you're my substitute you're my savior and receive him right now he says behold I stand at your door and I'm knocking hear the call open the door and I will come in it will be all you need now tomorrow forever all through your life and beyond life on earth it can be your Savior right now give me a good amen church amen. let's bow our heads as we pray just quietly there commit your heart to the Lord and say Lord I give myself to you maybe you've done that before do it afresh it's not too much Lord I give myself to you right now I commit my heart my present my future unto you my past take care of my past forgive my sins give me a new life give me peace in my heart be my Savior be my deliverer, be my healer, be my provider, be the Lord and the master of my life from today. Guide me throughout the rest of my life. In eternity, you'll be for me, you defend me, and I will have fellowship with you and with God Almighty, even forever. The Lord hear your prayers father in jesus name we thank you for this privilege we're asking oh lord as many as have turned away from the past whatever it was and have turned to you now the sacrificial lamb the one who died for us forgive them in jesus name take over their lives let this be a turning point in every life even from today in jesus name and be real as a guide into the future make their every life better and use every life to make our community make our state and make our nation better in jesus name but thank you because we know you have answered in jesus name we pray Amen.